speaking directly to the American people, explaining how it was the case that we lost 13 Americans in Afghanistan from these same kind of terrorists, how it's the case that we now have a war in Europe where there are thousands of innocents being slaughtered, and how today we've got nine Americans who confirmed dead. Martha, I think you're right. I think we're likely to find that there were more. I think we're likely to find that there are American hostages as well. The president needs to explain how it is we're going to begin the process of threat elimination. This is no longer about managing a process. This is now about threat elimination. This is existential for the Israeli nation, and it's important to the American people, too. American leadership is demanded, and the president should be on TV tonight, prime time, telling him how America is going to do this. One more for you. Um, it, a lot of discussion in some media outlets about Israel, uh, the blockade around Gaza, and that in many ways they brought this on themselves, uh, according to a lot of people whose voices are out there. What do you say to that? So I feel terrible for the uh, citizens, the Arab citizens who are living in Gaza under the the terror of the Iranian regime themselves, that is, just like the Iranian people being having their lives and families destroyed by this theocratic thug, uh, the Ayatollah. Uh, we, we should give Israel the capacity, the capability to make sure they can do what they need to do, and that's eliminate this threat to their own nation. It's what we would do for America. It's what we expect at our southern border. Israel's got to do it on its borders, and I'm confident that they will, so long as America doesn't, that the president doesn't stare at this, because it? it's going to be ugly, Martha. We're going to see things in the coming days and weeks. This is going to be really? a real war. As long no. as America doesn't deny Israel the capacity to go do this, I'm confident Israel can eliminate this no. threat. Okay. Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State, former CIA director, sir, always good to have you. And exactly, it was how I feel completely. He's exactly right on top of it. What a great leader he, he was and is, Mike Pompeo. Now, to speak out so forcefully on this issue today, uh, given that you are no longer Speaker of the House, sir. Uh, if you watched, um, every single year I've been in Congress, I have led the freshman Republicans over to Israel. I made it a bipartisan as well. My first trip as Speaker was to Israel to speak at the 75th anniversary at the Knesset of the creation of their country, only the second American Speaker to do that. I know that there's no greater ally than we have as Israel. I, the atrocities that I have watched, and Martha, I've got to tell you, Fox is reporting, and um, Trey Yikes is probably one of the best reporting I have seen live what is happening right now. But we cannot stay silent. The president cannot put a lid when the world is watching. What we have found is this new administration, the appeasement of paying for hostages, is, has made it more emboldened to take Americans. We now have nine Americans dead. This cannot be Afghanistan. We cannot leave one American behind. We should also stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel. Supply the weapons they need. You know, the fear I have, I've been to every part of this. I've watched the Iron Dome there. What the, what the Hamas will do is send dumb rockets at the beginning to try to wipe out all the Iron Dome has, then send precision guided. We need to make sure they have all the weaponry they need so it won't be that way. And we need to go after because in this new administration, Iran is financially stronger. They're funding more terrorism around the world. If you look at the foreign world currencies holding, they only had in 2020 four billion. Now they have 70 billion. They gave us assurances, they would tell us, when they provided that 60 billion, that they could always pull it back. They should freeze it today while it's in Qatar. They should put sanctions on their oil production. When Biden first took office, they were only producing 400,000 barrels a day. Today, they're producing 3 million barrels at oil being $100 a barrel. This is where they're becoming stronger and funding. And for the idea that our Secretary of State doesn't know if Iran was involved and the Wall Street Journal knows more, we need to reassess our own intel failure here and make sure we secure our own border of what's happening. We're going to um, ask about that in, in just a, a moment. Um, Obviously, it's been a rough week uh, in the House of Representatives, and you know Matt Gates is speaking out again, saying that um, Matt Gates ought to be ashamed of himself. I wouldn't even show my face if I was him. He is ridiculous. I don't think that other countries think about Look at him. McCarthy's speakership Childish, as much as Kevin immature, does. There is no and greedy. from Israel that we are unable to meet because it's going to take us a few days to pick a new speaker. So you described a lack of leadership right now based on the shakeup last week. Um, why is that there? I mean, I know you think that it feels like the speaker pro tempore ought to be able to do anything yes. that you could have done in that spot. That seems like the safest place for the country to be. And are you considering putting your name back in to run again. 
the, the, the conference decides all that. This isn't about the speakership. This is about where we're currently serving. Watch what happened in Israel where nine Americans died, 800 Israelis. That's the equivalent of 30,000 Americans if it happened here. This is happening because of weak leadership. The president puts a lid on. Where is anybody else? I am still a member of Congress. I understand the relationship between America and Israel. I have dear friends in the leadership there and living there. And I'm not going to sit back and do nothing. What I have found what's going on, if we had listened to Matt Gates, we would be in a government shutdown right now. So our own troops would be being paid. What strength would we have in the world then? If eight people want to side with all the Democrats for their own personal beliefs, that's fine. But I'm elected to go serve, and I'm not going to sit back and watch what's happening around the world and be quiet because the rest of leadership won't. Right. Um, you, and you I admire the you. The time that you've spent there, your relationships there. Uh, if asked to run again by the conference, will you? Look, that, that's a conference decision. They could decide which way they're going to go. For this conference, look, I'm a conservative that wants to govern. But if we have a majority and 96% want to go one way, but 4% gets to decide what happens, that's not a majority. And the idea that Matt Gates is going to divide a Gates, a Gates, a Mace, and a, a Pelosi decision on who's going to be our speaker, that's wrong. But the conference will decide that, but this has nothing to do with that. Look at the world in which we're living. That's we right. This axis of evil from Iran, Russia, and China. The devil. Two years ago, under the Trump administration, we did not have war in Europe. We did not have war in, in Israel. We had peace. We didn't have oil at $100 a barrel. We should sanction Iran's oil, and we should reproduce that in America, where we have the capability, and it'd be a more environmentally sound. Why don't we make America strong? we got an open border where we have caught 151 people on the FBI terrorist watch list. In 2019, that number was zero. They're coming across our border from 160 different countries. What are they doing? Do they have any cells here? Who are they talking to? I know in California, we had two people coming from Yemen. Yeah. What do they want to do to us? And we have an administration that goes silent. They can have a barbecue, but the president can't talk to the world and when they're looking for leadership. What can be done to give the speaker pro tempore more power? Is that something that you're going to spearhead? And can that rule be changed right now, given what's going on and, and the urgent need for leadership from Congress and from the White House? But this is new territory. This was only put in after 9-11. But I would believe if this was put in after 9-11, wanting to make sure someone can serve as speaker, they should have the power to serve as speaker till the new person is elected. I actually believe the individual should be able to move. The, the challenge here is that we can't do anything until we elect a speaker. Now, I have a number of members that didn't want to have a continuing resolution, a number of members who didn't want to vote for the appropriations. But because I kept government open, eight of them decided they could go with the Democrats and, and stymie our entire government for their own personal beliefs. Well, we've got the world. Look at if you look at what's happening in the world today, it looks a lot like the 1930s. Right. We've got challenges with a, this axis of evil. We've got war in different locations. We've got five embassies that had to be uh, removed Americans. We've got Americans dead being held hostage. We've got a president that puts a lid on it by noon. This is not a time for people to sit back. This is a time to show leadership, Action. be calm, but really give the right direction. We should show so, the world that we stand with, a, with, with Israel, that we're going to fund their ability. We should be very clear that we're, we stand with them, that Hamas has to be destroyed. Not weakened, but destroyed. Amen. We understand that it's coming from Iran, that there should be punishments for this. We should refreeze the money, sanction their oil production, and have America produce that oil so we're strong. Hey, have absolutely so, right. Um, it, it, let me ask you this. This is a very important week for the House. So yes. today is Monday. Do you expect that there will be a new Speaker of the House by Wednesday? I believe we have the capability to do it. We'll come into conference tonight. We'll have our debates tomorrow. We'll have our election on Wednesday. And as far as right now, there are only two people who are in the running for that job, Steve Scalise um, and Jim Jordan, and not you, exactly. correct? Correct. All right. We'll see where this goes. Uh, former Speaker of the House, good to have you with us. Kevin McCarthy, as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank very you. much. So we have protests going Hello, Martha. 
I'm here in front of a synagogue in Upper East Side, Manhattan. This is part of the security situation where police and private security are guarding the sensitive locations, not just synagogues, but also mosques. And I want to show you live the protest that's going on uh, right now in Midtown Manhattan. You're going to see, uh, this is in front of the Israeli Mission to the United Nations. You see on one side of 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street, the Israeli flags uh, and the Israeli protesters. They are the pro-Israel protesters standing up strongly for the Jewish state, harshly condemning the atrocities, the savagery, the butchery, what we have seen coming out of Gaza and Hamas, the absolutely vile revulsion against civilized, the civilized world, the type of actions that have taken with these executions and the hostage taking. Well, on the other side of the street, there you see live the pro-Palestinian side. They want uh, aid from the U.S. cut to Israel, and some of them were even cheering on and supporting the type of executions and cold-blooded murders that we have seen. Martha, back to you. Eric, thank you very much. We'll keep an eye on those live protests that are going on right now in Washington, D.C. And with that, um, we're going to hear directly from the White House with John Kirby next.